So sometimes uh, the questions which I get is, um, what happens with prolonged infection? So for example, if your dog has an ear infection and uh, we treat it, and the vet's treated, and it's actually much better, and it gets a repeated infection, say six months down the road, or a year down the road, and it gets repeated infection, you know, time over time over time. What happens with that? Is there any problems? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, because every single time your dog's ear gets infected, the ear canal, okay, it narrows due to the inflammation, and we give the topical medication or oral medication or injections of steroids or anti-inflammation reduce the inflammation, works very, very well. It opens up the canal again. However, it tends to leave a little bit of scar tissue. So every single time when your dog gets an infection in the ear, no matter what your vet does in terms of medication, yes, you can open up the canal again, but it will never open up as big as what it was before. It will always be narrowed, okay? So over time, you prolong infection, as you can imagine, it narrows all the way down, you open up, narrows all the way down, opens up, but eventually, it will become so full of scar tissue, because scar tissue is not inflammation, it's just scar tissue, that no anti-inflammatory can open it up again. So that is why we always try to address ear infections as soon as possible, and you, just in general for your dog's lifetime, you do not really want repeated infections to that ear because you will find that the same ear will get infected again and again and again and again and again. So we really, really want to try to reduce that, okay? And also, don't forget, it does give the higher risk of hematoma. Hematoma is where you get the whole ear to be bloated up because um, of a blood, sort of a blood pooling in the pinna in the flap of the ear itself. That usually happens when there is excessive movement around there, like uh, excessive trauma, either head shaking, pushing blood into the pinnas, or excessive scratching because of uh, ear problems. So that is usually a problem. Um, and certainly with prolonged infection, you can get the increased chance of hematomas because the amount of trauma to the ear may be more in terms of scratching or shaking. Okay, that's because when the ear flap, what happens is that there's a little, the, the blood vessels inside there, they burst, okay, and every time they sh uh, shake or scratch, they just push more blood, separating the ear flap, they get a big little round uh, ball on the, the, the swollen ear, so to speak, okay, then your vet would have to do different things to it. What about the ear canal itself? Over time, when that really, really narrows all the way down because of repeated infections, that may be treated, but does it's not treated adequately, or it just leaves down scar tissue. It just causes the whole canal to be um, shrunken, not shrunken, but you know, it just collapses all the way down. So in the end, there is no more canal in the first place. Ventilation is poor. It just increases the risk of infection because the ventilation is poor. It's more likely that the bacteria and the malassezia will, in, will increase and proliferate again, causing a problem. Ultimately, okay, the, the, the treatment of choice may be surgery, okay, because no medication, no topical or oral medication can help the ear and what becomes a structural problem. It's no longer just an infection. Then your vet may have to offer surgery to you, depending on how bad it's bad and exactly where in the canal it is. They may have to op uh, they may have to operate either on the vertical canal, just the outside of it, or the vertical and horizontal canal, and remove the entire canal. So those surgeries can be fairly invasive, and um, and certainly quite extensive. So the whole idea is that we want to try to prevent. It. That is really really end stage. We are wanting to prevent the surgery to happen in the first place. Which brings us to our next topic. How do we prevent ear infections from happening now that you know that your dog has had an ear infection? So, preventing ear infections from happening in your dog. Check your dog's ear regularly for any abnormal discharge, whether they are a bit of pass, green, or check for any sort of odour or redness, different colours. These are usually the first sign of many ear infections. If the ear does seem a little bit dirty, or different to usual, you can gently clean them with a bit of cotton ball, okay, that is damp with solution as provided by your vet, ear solutions, okay. We also recommend cleaning them thoroughly after you have, uh, after your dog has had a bath or have gone for a swim in the river. 
If your dog has a lot of hair hanging down, um, why not cut it, trim it? Okay, maybe not yourself, I get a groomer to do it. Not only does your dog have a nice new haircut, you can achieve two different things. One, you can actually see the ear canal. If it's full of hair, you can't see anything. And secondly, not having the hair over there will allow air to get in to keep the whole area fresh and free and clean and dry compared to it's all full of hair and it's stuck and you know it gets a little bit damp making uh, the chance of infection much higher. Something that you really really should not do is to use cotton buds to stick inside the ear okay if you feel there's a problem. It may worsen things because if there's any foreign bodies you can push it in deeper into the ear okay and also you can potentially damage the ear as well and this itself can uh, predispose to or cause more commonly ear infections and possibly also damage please don't do that okay in general if you are concerned about your pet's ear about your dog's ear always check with your vet to put your mind at ease they do have the best tools the best knowledge okay for cytology to give you to give your dog the appropriate treatment to give you a peace of mind and the best outcome for both you and your dog. I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, live MT event. This is Amity.